But the idea is not archaic. Hate just means it's repulsive to you. It's chew means you draw back. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like a hot fire you draw back from. it. And God said that's the kind of man Job was. And look while they <coughs> prayed it. His friends prayed it against Job because they had erroneous thoughts yeah. uh -huh. Uh -huh. about him. Another word in Psalm 62.3 just has to do with concocting mischief. How long will you imagine mischief against a man? Huh? <laughs> How long, gee, we, have talk, we pray for brethren that there are people imagining mischief against them. Mm -hmm. They have evil intentions against them. It's good to pray before the Lord and say, How, how long are these people going to get by with thinking of doing evil to your people? Mm -hmm. This is how the psalmist thought. See, he knew there's a way of thinking that's wrong. Yeah. You can't change it in the other person, but you can sure go to God. Yes, amen. Sure go to God with it. And you remember Psalm 2 1 spoke of it in this wise. Why do the heathen imagine, a, the people imagine a vain thing? That is, they were going to break, up, break the yoke of divinity off of them, the cords of the ropes. It's like God had a hold of them and his Christ had a hold of them. They're going to break, <coughs> break them off. See, that's, a, that's an imagination. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, it tends in the wrong direction, and, and whatever tends in the wrong direction will be overcome by God. It's just mm -hmm. a matter, just a matter of time. That's yes. all. And another one means to. Word means it's a, con, a, a contrivance. I would call it a network of thoughts that all blend together, but they're all they're all pointless and vain. And Solomon said it in these words, Proverbs six eighteen: A heart with that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that shall be swift in running into mischief. This is one of the things God hates. Mm -hmm. A person that cooks up a plan or a purpose or an objective that's got a lot of different facets to it. See, a person in this world that says, I'm going to make some ungodly friends because they can help me get my, mm -hmm. my will done. I'm going to buy some ungodly things that will help me to do what I want to do. I'm going to be some God, ungodly places. I'm showing you there's a way of thinking when you kind of build a case. Mm -hmm. That's an imagination. Yeah. Not that it won't happen. Mm -hmm. We're not saying it's a figment of the imagination. Mm -hmm. The imagination and figment of the imagination is not the same. It means it's a, it's a way of thinking and a plan that can be developed like oh, we're going to build a tower to reach this to here. Yeah. Yeah. That was imagination, see. Mm -hmm. And one other one here, in Proverbs 12, 20, something that's it's a plan that's secretly devised. Proverbs 12, 20, Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. Mm -hmm. In the heart. See? Secret. I have no doubt that there are people you know personally that have some secret thoughts about you mm -hmm. that you could well be glad they don't tell them to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It might not scare you, but it can it, it discourage you. Uh -huh. you know? That's a way of thinking that secretly that a person overestimates their ability. Well, those are kind of the background. I want to show how this word is used in Scripture, just a few of the ways. I can't go into all of these. One is just thinking in general. That just the way of thinking in general mm -hmm. is in the wrong direction. Now, when a society that once had some semblance of understanding about God, like the like the Ten Commandments and the Constitution in our country that was formed basically with God's words in the back of their mind. That's what moved them to do what they do. When a, when a nation drifts away from that kind of thinking, it's always wrong. Yeah. Now here's what God said. First what, first what He said to, uh, to uh, Noah and then what he, what he said about it to Himself. And oh, I, I failed to tell you, I wanted to mention what, how this word means in the Greek language also. In Luke 1, 51, it's referred to though God scattering the proud mm -hmm. in the imagination of their hearts. That is, he, he foiled their plans. Yeah. Yes. That, that's the idea. Uh -huh. Brought to nothing their purposes. In Acts 4, 25, they quoted the second psalm, Why do the people imagine a vain? What? <laughs> What moved them to think they could actually get rid of Jesus? He ended up on the throne of the universe. Yeah. And Romans 1.21 is another word for it, that the whole Gentile world began to 
became vain in their imaginations. Not vain in their dreaming and this sort of thing. Vain in the way they thought. Imaginations here is their entire body of thought became pointless and aimless. So much so they worship beasts and this sort of thing and degenerated into immorality. And then there are there's a whole way of thinking that is to be cast down and dethroned. Now you um I know you know this, but we, it's good for us to stir one another up about this. There's people, <coughs> perhaps that you know, that are doing the wrong thing, mm -hmm. and it concerns you that they're doing it. And it should concern you that, you're, mm -hmm. that, that, that they're doing it. And so you you want to bring this to an end. So how this? How do you go about this? How do you go about changing what a person does? Well, it's very challenging. Now, the desire to do it is still a noble desire. It's how to do it. That's the mm -hmm. issue. Well, here's one way. Change their way of thinking. Yes, amen. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. And that's, we've got weapons. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 10.5 mm -hmm. tells us we have weapons that can change the way people think. Yes, amen. Other people. Mm -hmm. Well, that's marvelous to consider. I don't mind. Yeah. It's quite challenging. Now, if you think you got a lot of faith, well, put it to work here. Mm -hmm. this, will, this will put it to the test. Because God honors the prayers of His people. Even when they say, change the way so-and-so thinks. I wouldn't, you know, Paul, in accounting for his salvation, he said that he came to Christ through the faith of God's elect. He made that statement in Titus, through the faith of God's elect. Now, it's kind of a challenging statement. What all did it mean? <coughs> I don't know, but I, I get the picture that Paul knew that other people threw down the thoughts that were in his mind. Mm -hmm. Somebody had been thinking about this solitary. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't change it by exhorting him personally and this sort of thing. But they could go to God who had control of him. Yes, amen. Anyway, it's a thing to think about. <laughs> now the word is used in Scripture, <laughs> imagination, as used in Scripture. The way of thinking is just the whole way is wrong. All the thoughts are just in... The, even though that you may not point out a, a flaw in one of them, it's in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. God said to Noah, he saw the imagination of the man, the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of his heart. Mm -hmm. How many? Every. Yeah, that's right. Imagination doesn't not mean a category of thought like I'm thinking about something that's not real. That's not what it means here. Every imagination means every thought is evil continually. What, what do you mean? He meant if, if you follow every thought they have to its logical conclusion, you'll end up in a pit. Mm -hmm. yep. Even if it looks like it's good here, but if you follow it, the path it takes, it leads down into darkness. So he told Noah, I'm, gonna, I, I'm sorry, I made man, I'm going to destroy him because of this condition. Mm -hmm. The flood came because of this condition. So he cleaned off the earth, and now he's got just got eight people left. Uh -huh. and, and it's a good thing Noah was there. There wouldn't be eight. I, that's why Noah's called the eighth person. Yeah. Huh? Peter called the eighth. There's always a comment in Scripture about Noah's wife or his children or anybody else in the right. great faith. There's Noah, none. That's right. But there is a Noah. So let's see, fathers, they, we can kind of take, yeah, right. can't take hope here. You may be the eighth person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you and your wife have six children. Think of yourself as the eighth person. Uh -huh. yeah. ah, a little hope there for you. The Lord, and now after the flood, you got eight people left. But they, their nature hasn't changed. They do fear God and they walk uprightly, but they're sure not perfect people. The Lord smelled a sweet savor, sacrifice. The eighth person <coughs> offered up his sacrifice. Smelled a savor and said in his heart, I will not again... Curse the ground anymore for man's sake. 